How did the short story come to your attention? And, and when it did, what made you think, OK, I want to adapt this, and I want to step behind the camera and interact it myself? Yeah. Um, I found the story really totally randomly. There was no reason for finding it about God, five years ago while I was making my last film. And it's a very short story. It's like 15 pages, or that's all it is. But I read it, and it just kind of stuck with me, kind of that central idea of this kind of past re-emerging really and affecting the present and affecting such a long long term relationship it just kind of really stuck in my head and even just that central idea of this person being preserved like yeah. that past being preserved it was just really it's kind of haunting and it doesn't really make sense but at the same time it seems to make total sense and I think that was what was so interesting to me I think we all live with so many like what ifs and regrets and however old you are if you're like 27 or 77 you can't help but look back and think what have happened if I'd just gone to that party or I'd walked down the street then or whatever it is exactly or missed that train or got on yeah. the bus or that kind of thing and when you when you were adapting it did you have in your mind actors or or was it kind of once you were finished and you're like okay now I have to go about Casting the perfect people for Jeff and Kate. It was definitely after I finished the script. Okay. I, it always scares me to think of people while I'm writing it because then you think, well, you not, might not be able right. to get them or they don't want to do it. But then very quickly after we'd finished the script and we started sending it out, you know, they were people that, that we, both me and the producer, loved so much and, and would, thought would be great for it. And we cast Charlotte first okay. because it's basically from her perspective, the film. It was very important to get that correct and then find someone that you felt was perfectly suited to, to her. Well, and her, uh, watching her is, is fascinating, but mm. both of them in that it's more kind of what they're not saying. What they mm. are saying is kind of the normal day-to-day -day stuff that you like, oh, did you have your coffee yet? Have yeah. you had breakfast kind of thing? But then what's going on in behind is yeah. what's kind of fascinating uh, for them. But also the, the setting is, and Tom mentioned that you actually, along with the script, sent a photo of the Alps and a photo yeah. of Norfolk. And what, what does Norfolk kind of add, do you think, to the film? Yeah, I mean, because the original short story is actually set in Wales, so it's okay. in, like, mountainous region. But for me, it was like, I love the idea of the past being this mountainous, incredible, like, place of glaciers and waterfalls and hope and, you know, soaring ideas of life. And then the, the present just being not necessarily unpleasant, but just flat and very kind of strangely isolating. And I lived in that area for a while. And I think it's a very beautiful area, but it certainly is quite a strange area to live in. And I just I thought it just suited kind of metaphorically the film nicely that they've they've gone into their middle age and their late middle age. Just and life is just going along very, very well and you can see the horizon coming up ahead of you, but that's it. Well and how do you go about because the film is is more about kind of not a breakdown particularly of a marriage, but the difficulties that, mm. th that they arrive with, with the past kind mm. of coming to haunt them, as you say. But they've been together for 45 years, mm. and they seem to have been pretty happy mm. 45 years. So how do you kind of establish that in that very quickly, given that they then have to move into this kind of difficult time? Yeah, there? it was always a bit of a worry. and But I think for me, it's about trying to, I think all of our lives, especially in relationships, they just, it becomes routine. Life is a routine. Right. Your relationship is a routine. You don't talk about things particularly anymore, especially after 45 years. But you do things like you go for a walk every morning, you come back, your partner might be having a cup of tea, he has the same mug that he always has, someone picks up the post, someone drops the post off. It's all that kind of really small, like routine things that basically in the first five minutes of the film, you kind of see but don't really consciously aware of. It's like, Kate is the one that walks the dog. Jeff is the one that's already up. He's in his dressing gown. Kate is already dressed. It's like creating that routine that you hope feels like, oh, okay, this is a couple that have existed together. And also the, the house they live in is so important. You know, we spent a lot of time production design making sure it felt like this was a house they lived in. They've got lots of books on the shelves. What are those books on the shelves? Where they bought their, you know, furniture from? And it's building up those layers of the past within a house. It's, and it, I think it's very effective because you do feel like they've been together that yeah. long. And then once you get towards the end of the film and the final scene in particular from, well actually from, from Tom's speech or mm. Jeff's speech, um, but the camera lingering on her at, at the end mm. and the, was it always looking, it's, it's not necessarily ambiguous but the story is not over kind of is, is the feeling. Was that always how you wanted to, to end it? <laughs> Yeah, it was always the intention. I think it's for me. It's so important that you know a film. The films I love the most are when you come into a film, you see these people's lives, and then you just leave it. Right. Now, there's no life is not tied up with a bow apart from when you maybe die. <laughs> so I just don't want that to happen. I wanted. I want you to feel like this is something that's happened. It's a very important week. It's a profound thing has happened. But then we just don't know what is going to happen after that. And I love that kind of slightly ambiguous ending because I think. 
I want my film to live in people's like imaginations longer when they leave right. the cinema. And I can see some great films, but if they're too neatly tied up, I forget about them the minute I leave that cinema. And I love the idea that it just keeps growing in people's minds a little bit. You know, they might be sitting on the bus and suddenly it will pop into their mind. And if, if that's what the short story did to me, so if I can do that with the film, then I feel like it, it's, it's, it's had its effect. Well, the element of climate change and that Jeff becomes kind of fascinated by, is that in the short story or is it something that you added kind of as an... Do you know what? I can't remember. I think it might be. I just, I just love the idea that, you know, we have all these passions in our, in our lives that we pretty much lose as we, get, as we start getting older. And I love the idea that suddenly he, was resur he became resurrected again and he became interested in the world and interested in, the, in things around him and interested in the past as well as the future. And I think that's... I think as you as you do get older, you do lose your like passion for things in life, and I wanted him to look like he was rekindling that passion. And obviously, that's really hard for Kate to witness. It's like, why have you found your passion again in life because of some dead woman yeah. in the ice? It's not me. Not who's doing because it. Yeah, of me. Exactly. Yeah. And this this shadow that as she, I think she says at one point that like, and you think that you're fighting against something that. Yeah. Is that you have no power over, but also... And it shouldn't really be a be threat. There. She's been dead yeah. for 50 years, and she's not going to suddenly come alive again, this woman. You're not having an affair. This woman is dead and has been dead. And I think the thing for me is, like, once you start focusing in on your life, focusing on choices, what-ifs, it's very easy for that all to crumble away and your whole understanding of your existence to crumble away. And that can be a very, very like terrifying process for all of us. And I think we probably all go through it at some point mm -hmm. in our life. You just don't want to go through it when it's too late to change anything. Well, and I, I remember thinking as I'm watching it that she's, she's not necessarily making good choices when she's doing it because mm -hmm. she's asking questions that you're, you're sitting there going, don't ask, you don't yeah. want to know the answer to yeah. that question. And Jeff is very honest with, mm -hmm. with her though, which I, I thought was, Interesting, because it kind of makes you think, is honesty always the best policy, kind of? Yeah, I never know if that's true or not, because it's hard. It's like sometimes, you know, you, you, you can never get into your partner's brain, you, and you don't want to get into their brain. It's better to stay out Safer, of their brain. Yep. And you want to be honest and truthful and trusting, and everyone tells you that's what you should be. But there are some things, you know, that you probably should just keep to yourself. We all have fears and doubts all the time, and it's always not good to necessarily express them to your partner because everybody's insecure, everything's fragile, you know, and it's like, it's finding that balance, I suppose, in relationships. Exactly. Um, and when you finally, I, I, the film premiered at, in Berlin, yeah. I believe, what was it like when you finally got to see it with an audience? And did anything kind of surprise you about the reactions to the film? It's very hard for me to ever watch a film with people that I've made. And Berlin is actually the only time I've ever watched it with an audience. Okay. I watch the world premiere and then I don't go and see it again. And it's hard because you, you especially with a film like this, where people aren't like laughing or whatever. So it's just like, people are watching it, so it's so hard to gauge reaction. But afterwards, you know, people really responded to it and it resonated with people and, and it's, you know, it's incredibly like rewarding and that's all you want. And you just don't know going in if people are gonna, gonna like it and it, it worked for them. So it's, it's very nice that it, that it does.